Hello everyone and welcome back to Flight Sim 2020 where I'm going to fly the Boeing 247D from Wings 42 in southern Chile. And I decided to fly in Chile because, well, navigation is fairly easy. Uh, it's all in one line <laughs> and uh, it's, a, it's an adventurous trip after all. It is a very large country, though very thin. In fact, our current flight here is 500 nautical miles and it looks like it'll take three hours, at least that's what the sim estimates. Maybe it will cut it down to something less, but uh, well, we end up here at Laguna San Rafael Airport, but Santiago is here. That is the middle of the country, and then like the top of the country is over there somewhere. Uh, there's the Atacama Desert uh, right here. So yeah, it's uh, it's a long ways and navigation is not a problem. You just go in a straight line mostly, but we are actually doing some interesting side trips here because we've got some wildlife. We've got seagulls here. I don't know if I really want to see seagulls. I see enough of them already. Um, there's interesting airports nestled in the middle, like there's this one. This actually has a decent runway there. Uh, that's just a nav point. And then we've got flamingos here. And we've got airport, a grass airport nestled. I mean, it's got to look interesting here, this airport here. And then there's an airport here. And there was another one, another airport up there. Those must be interesting landing spots. This one too. That's an asphalt airport. I mean, there's a ton of airports down here. And there's one called Cochrane here. And then we've got flamingos here as well. I don't know if we're going to see the flamingos or not. Uh, I think on the right side of this lake is actually Argentina. Some of this I've been, I've had to be very careful. I think this location is in Argentina. Well, it says Lago Argentino, so uh, yeah, presumably. Uh, so yeah, we've had some uh, interesting navigation points here. Uh, there's two runways here, uh, both grass, I think. And then we end up here, and this airport is 2,900 feet of asphalt. Okay, so here we are, and the engines have immediately wound down, uh, so we're going to have to restart them. The thing is, uh, I have already tried this once, and I have found out that maybe we have the wrong oil. So, we are going to top that stuff off, but we're also going to change the oil that we put into the engines. I think... SAE 30 should be fine. I mean, I think it's the actual oil temp that we want to optimize for, not the exterior temp. Uh, it's tough to say, but the exterior temp will be flying fairly low. And right now, outside, the air temp is above 30 degrees Fahrenheit. So we should be safe to use SAE 30 as long as we don't go too high and cold. I guess. I mean, it depends on what the temperature range is supposed to match. So, oil change, SAE 30. Okay. And we have to wait until everything else gets topped off, too. And then I'll have to try and start this thing. Okay, I'm doing the priming. And wobble pumping. And priming. Okay, and up there. Wobble pumping. Line up flywheel. Mesh flywheel. Oh, does that sound like I've got it? Okay, I think it sounds okay. Switching engine selector. And meshing. And get rid of the wheel shocks. Assuming everything is okay. All right, seems okay to me. So, we get to start our flight in southern Chile. Let's hope everything goes all right. I've had trouble with uh, engines quitting on me. Oh, 
really far off to the right here. Okay, we are off the ground. Let's see, I've got this map app. Well, it was uh, 15 knot right at us. Not bad. I mean, that's okay. Oh, it's a little bit askew. Alright, so we're supposed to go for seagulls, but we probably won't see seagulls. Uh, but we are going to head towards the town of Punta Arenas. And the seagulls were supposed to be there. And that's a little bit out of our way, it's to the south. We we're supposed to be headed north mainly, but we'll just take a look around here. 34 knot wood now. Now we're talking. And that's against us in terms of the direction we will eventually be going in, so that's not great. I'm trying to go low to see if we can spot these se supposed seagulls here, but I'm not sure. We're gonna get any glimpse of them. Yeah, I don't know, I don't see any. Just checking the oil temp and oil pressure to make sure those are holding out. Well, you can see the view of Punta Arenas from inside the cockpit. Alright, so now we're headed in the right direction, but against a 30 knot wind, so that's not great. Not a bad look to the place so far. Oil temp is getting high. I don't know. And we're losing oil pressure again. Well, we're below the intended minimum oil pressure here. I don't know what kind of issue we're having. I'll try and limit the RPM and all. Okay, well I've been troubleshooting this. We've gone sort of awry here. We're not going fast at all. Our oil pressure has recovered though. I don't know what it is I did. I've got carburetor heat on and set the oil shutter lever down. I don't know if that was a good thing or a bad thing. Now the oil pressure is going up. That oil pressures of 75 to 100 PSI are desired. So, alright. But we're still facing a 45 knot headwind. We are not going to get to where we're supposed to get to like this. The scenery looks reasonable. I'd expect this sort of look at... Uh, certainly along the coast there, it looks like photo scenery to me. I don't know what that area to the right there, that's sort of tannish. Why it's quite like that, but I think it's probably like that. That's not random. Actually, it's on the map. It's called Mina Peckett. I don't know what... Oh, it looks like maybe a mine? That's that's a mine of some kind, or something like that. Quarry or mine. 49 knot. Let, let me try and go lower altitude. I mean, the higher we go, the worse the wind gets. Our ground speed is only like 97 knots right now. Well, we're back down to 2,000 feet, and the headwind is less down here, uh, just 29 knots now. 
and we can go a whole 150 knot ground speed instead of just like a hundred something. We'll try and stay close to the ground. It seems much better down here. Looking good though. We have an incentive to go as low as we can, but ultimately I see some mountains up there. So we can't stay low forever. Just skimming right along here. I'm definitely beginning to think maybe I should have done this Chilean tour from north to south. Uh, the winds would be in our favor in that case. Presuming that the winds always go in this direction, which they might. We might be in trouble for the entire escapade, if you will. We'll see. Yeah, that's interesting over to right there, too. Whatever is going on there. The plateau we've got here. It is fun flying low, of course. Especially if you happen to be flying slow and have no choice. Uh, ground speed right now, though, is... Uh, airspeed is 140 knots there, and subtract uh, 26 knots, so we're talking about 114 knots. <laughs> Uh, and it was a 500 nautical mile plan, so we're in for, it's not a two hour journey, let me put it that way. Oh, we've only got a four knot wind against us now, as long as we stay really low like this. Maybe, I mean, it's not completely against us either. Maybe the wind is changing enough that we can continue. Unfortunately, after uh, Puerto Natales, the next airport is not only a fair bit away, I would expect an hour away, but also it's one of those hard to land at grass drips. So, so taking a look at our plan here, got a custom point there and then there's the flamingos they do want to get to the flamingos but the flamingos are a ways off you can see we've covered only that little bit there and then we've got this long leg ahead of us to get to the flamingos and then some tough airports to land at. 2,000 foot grass strip kind of airports. We are currently an hour in. Well, pressure is getting a bit high now. Let's try that shut oil shutter. And see if that really does reduce the oil pressure. Lots of open space for grazing, I guess. That sort of thing. Well, let me go higher a bit and see what the wind is like at a higher altitude. Just to judge whether we should continue this flight. Eventually we're going to have mountains in our way, so... You can see them up ahead. Yep, yep, okay, okay, okay. It's the same old wind up here. There's only 2,000 feet right now, but it's just getting worse and worse. Okay, well, I think I see Puerto Natales right there. Okay, well, it's longer than I had planned, but I'll continue on at least to one of those dangerous strips. It'll be a high stakes sort of situation. Maybe we'll see flamingos, maybe we won't. Usually usually with these locations for wildlife that the game has, they're never there. They're there if uh, it's a third party thing or one of those. There's some freeware packages that place the wildlife and I found them like that. But as far as the ones indicated by the game itself by default, I've never been able to find them at those locations. 
So, if it says hippos on the map, I can't find hippos at that place. But, if it's a uh, fewer pack that adds hippos, there are those. Um, I have been able to find them in those places. Uh, there's the airfield to our right there that I would have been able to land at. Nice and clear, very easy, looks like. And probably gonna regret not landing there. So sort of the grand scheme of things, we are here. That's what it looks like. We started basically at Punta Arenas. And Chile keeps going up and up and up and up and it's huge really. If I actually cover all of Chile in this plane, that's going to be quite an accomplishment, really. Game added a sprinkle of snow to the landscape there. I think there's ice up ahead, too. I hope that doesn't change our... our oil situation, you know. Maybe the oil doesn't like these temperatures or something. Since I opened the oil shutters, the oil pressure hasn't actually gone up yet. Still sort of at 70 there. So, Parc Nacional Torres del Paine. That's, that's what it's called, apparently. Huge national park offering mountain and glacier views. Yeah, I believe it. Uh, more than 100 bird species camping and boating. The local mesh seems a little bit lackluster though. Could definitely do with a mesh update around here. There's those spikes on that mountain up ahead. That's not nice. I hope those sort of smooth out or something. The sim was doing so well with the look of the place until now. Okay, now the old pressure seems to be climbing up a little bit. Yeah, no, I think that mountain's gonna look like that. Oh my god, the spikes went higher. It's getting crazy out here. I don't know how tall that is. I'm trying to stay low here. Yeah, I sure as heck can't climb very quickly. Apparently, that might be called Cerro Balmaceda. But I don't think it looks like that. <laughs> um, I, uh, they have an image on Google of it. And yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's not a bad approximation except for the spikes. I mean, it's not great. It's not great, but they take away the spikes, and it's somewhat, somewhat recognizable. Oh, that direction would have not been too bad either. Maybe I'm just trying to cross. There's there's basically a ridge of mountains. We need to get onto the other side of it to get to the west coast. Basically, Chile looks like that has a bunch of fjords, and we need to get over to those. So we have to cross these mountains somehow. Okay. Just circling around the mountain. <laughs> the spikes are still there. <laughs> yep. That spike, though. That's a thing. I don't really want to go this way. Looks free and clear though in front of us. I really wanted to go a little bit further to the left, to the west. I think I see another spike over there. And this might be a pit of doom in front of us right here too. That mountain looks normal. Let's see, is that Pit of Doom? It could give the snow some texture. Or something. 
some bumpiness maybe. And I guess glaciers are like this, but that might just be a uh, edge. Yeah, I don't think it's a pit. It's just an edge. An ice cliff. Temperature is it's still fine. I mean, it's actually above freezing right now. The air temp, apparently. Okay, I feel like this is leading us to go higher and higher here, which is not conducive to a good situation for us. Look at that. It's basically a very smooth upslope, but it's definitely an upslope. Super smooth, really. We're at 3,000 feet and it's just sort of an endless plain of snow. At least it's a little bit more wrinkly here. Yeah, I feel like I'm in some sort of Antarctic expedition now. And there's some spikes there. Another spike over there. wonder how Antarctica looks like. Probably not too much better than this. Well, somewhere over here, there are these channels and water and such, which should be low. <laughs> right now, we've got this 41 knot wind against us, and we're going about 86 knots ground speed. Airspeed 116 minus the 41. Oh, it's horrible. It's 74? 74 knots. We're really struggling out here. The airspeed is keeping us up a bit, but it's not great. It's getting colder and colder. Airspeed is going really low now. Things are feeling very unstable, like... Very unstable. <laughs> the oil temp is getting too low. It's like getting frozen. We need to go down. Well, there's a chance of going down there. Okay, it looks like we do have the salvation after this ridge here, but... We need to get there. Okay. Let's get down here. I've lowered the propeller pitch, but... It should be lowering RPM, but that doesn't seem to be doing much right now. The RPM gauge seems stuck or something. Yep, nothing seems to be affecting the RPM right there. Okay, now the RPM gauge is moving. Now oh, about 60 gallons of fuel in the left. I'm going to switch to the right tank, right main tank to just balance things out. Okay, that looks like the situation is more normal and the oil temp might be picking up now. I'm definitely going to head closer to the water here. Let's head over there. I'm not impressed enough by the mountains to stay within them. We need better mesh around here if we're going to enjoy the mountains. 18 knots, 19 knots at this altitude we used to have like uh, 8 now the wind's gotten worse around here. I even see water instead of ice. I guess there's some water over there too, but we'll follow this up. Um, we can probably get a fair ways like this. I'm really pushing it on the airspeed too. You can see where we are on the dial. I don't know if I can go any faster than that without it breaking. Top speed 200 miles an hour. Well, we're sort of there. I mean, that's the indicated airspeed. Not our ground speed, that's for sure. I don't know if these are properly called fjords over here. But whatever they are, I feel like calling this fjording is 
sort of a nice way of putting it, going down these channels along the coast. Stuff over there looks better, but maybe it won't look better up close. Apparently we're approaching Parc Nacional Bernardo O'Higgins. Bernardo O'Higgins National Park. Bernardo O'Higgins was a Chilean independence leader who freed Chile from Spanish rule in the Chilean War of Independence. So, he's got a national park. Got clouds now. I've been flying for two hours, or I don't know exactly how much of that was the startup. Maybe a little bit less than two hours. We've got some serious spikes up ahead there. There is no autopilot, so all the flying has been manual. Yeah, I think we're gonna miss the flamingos. I can't believe they decided to put flamingos out here anyway. Well, that's a green over there we haven't seen in a while. Very lush green. Well, now it's all misty. We've gone through a few phases during this flight. Well, nice of it to kill visibility when I'm eventually going to have to land soon. Oh, we've got precipitation even. Uh, it might be clearing up. Up, oh, well, just like that. Seems to have cleared up, in fact. Yep. Just a little patch of rain. Well, it looks like about 12 gallons left in the right main tank. I think I'll go back to the left here. The left has... Uh, 55-ish gallons, and that should hold us until we land. Assuming I can land on a 2,000-foot strip. <laughs> or even see the 2,000-foot strip. I'm looking for a way to cut across some stuff without smacking into a mountain. So a cloud in the way of my view here. Uh, we would like to go in that general direction. I mean, we can clearly see there's some mountain over there. But I don't know what happens in the middle here. Uh, it's still a white splotch in front of me. <laughs> What's there? I don't know. I can't see a darn thing. I'm gonna turn around. I'll go up the regular channel. I was trying to cut across, but this is too dangerous. Yep, I, I don't know, I see some land there. It's probably high enough to be an obstacle. Well, there's nothing for it. We have to sort of go into that. But we're over water right now, and hopefully we can stay over water for a while. Well, it's, the location's on this Rio Pascua, but I don't see it showing the airport there. Great, more clouds, more rain. I think for once I'll try and climb a bit. I think I can see the mountains in front of us right there. Just sort of a hazy outline. Oh great, it's gotten really bad. So just realistically, I'll just keep climbing. If we were really in a Boeing 247, we wouldn't have the GPS map and all. So we'd try and climb over the... make sure that we we're above any possible terrain obstructions. Just get to a safe height. We're still over water. But if we want to cut across, we have to go over the land, and there's right now no telling how high that is. A 
well, there's a break in the clouds over there. Okay, well, we see the mountain over there. I've got to take that first. See that the engine is still working right. Sort of barely. And we're getting jostled a bit. Near 5,000 feet. Okay, we're getting some decent clips of landscape here. Whoa. And some lift there. Okay, I'll go this way. There is a flamingo location. But I don't know if we'll be able to see anything at all. And it'll be right before we try to land. 6,000 feet and climbing. Uh, I'm gonna change the oil shutter. Since that oil pressure seems to be going up and our power is going down too. I've, I'm adjusting the mixture as well. How the heck do flamingos get into this sort of place? It doesn't seem like the right place for flamingos. I have had the de-icer on the whole time, but now we're getting some stuff on the windscreen up here. It seems like it's beating out the de-icer. Okay, coming in down here. Hopefully there's a nice smooth slope on down to where we're going. Would you believe that the map said there were going to be flamingos around here? The map said there were going to be flamingos around here. Yep, right around here was a flamingo spot. I definitely don't see flamingos. And it's probably for the best that we don't see flamingos. Oh gosh, look at this. Please, can there not be rain at the landing spot? I really want to be done with this flight. It's time to switch maps here. You can see the SCIP there. See, it said flamingos, O'Higgins flamingos. Oh, this is probably going to be a bad idea. There's the landing gear, though. No flaps on this. Feel like the plane is as nervous about this landing as I am. Oh, maybe not. Maybe the wheels are off now. <laughs> oh, we're going down really fast. Okay. Oh, they started up again. Oh, maybe because we were nosing down, they were obscured from the airstream. Well, it's a runway in this direction, and it's somewhere in front of us. And I've been flying for three hours, and I need to stop. So... Gosh, is it one of those places nestled in trees and such? There? I think this is it. Oh, shoot. Please don't hit the trees. Please don't hit the trees. Oh gosh. 
Okay, um, they're not collidable trees. Apparently. I can't see where we are. Let me try and taxi out of the trees. I'm guessing this doesn't have a reverse. Not what you'd call an ideal landing, but... Darn it, the weather was horrible. Okay, we should be able to go in this direction. Oh! Oh, that tree was bad. <laughs> we hit a bad tree. Okay, well, there you have it. An ignoble end to a noble effort. Three hours and 16 minutes, by the way. And we can still hear the wheels. <laughs> oh, yep. Yeah. So, well, maybe we'll pick it up later. Maybe we won't. SCCI to SCTP with a crash into the trees at the end is what we'll call it. Due to bad weather, a bad weather landing and an overshoot of the runway. So, okay, there you have it. Flight with the Boeing 247. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.